All right, so got a package in the mail today. Let's see what we got going on here. All right. So got some. Uh, let's see here. Athlete vitamin here. Citadel Nutrition product. Something I take pretty much every day. Take about a uh, scoop and a half of this. And what else do we got in here? Some original tier one. Great pre-workout. Use that every time I work out. I like the original uh, a little bit more than the plus. Uh, it has a little bit less caffeine is the only difference and I like to usually just drink some coffee throughout the day anyways. Got a uh, nice note in here, so always like that they uh, send a personalized note with their stuff. Definitely feels like company that cares about you, so that's uh, that's something I really do appreciate. And it looks like we got something else. Citadel Nutrition notebook. That's pretty sweet. It's got a little band here. Could be used uh, easily for a training log because of how long it is, so something we could definitely uh, look into using in the future. So uh, thanks uh, Citadel Nutrition, appreciate that. So Garrett Blevins here with uh, day three of week 10. You'll notice here I put both weeks, uh, last week's and this week's uh, day three on here, just to show you that even though I'm doing less weight, um, the overall volume is not that different. You see only about 200 pounds difference in between the uh, lifts that I did less on today. And I just want to note that it is much better to cut out a little weight and keep sets and reps uh, than to cut out sets and reps altogether because uh, you lose so much more volume that way. So I went a little lighter on this day. Um, recovery has been feeling a little slow, so didn't want to push this too hard. Wanted to focus on some other things. Now I left my squat set up in here because as I've been doing some of this online coaching, I've noticed a lot of people setting up too quickly for their lifts. Notice how I put my hands on the bar and get my hands set up. I take a breath before I go under the bar so I don't overextend as I come underneath. Look how right before I unrack the bar I take in a deep breath and then I tighten my hips and glutes and pull them forward as I unrack the weight putting my spine in a neutral position. I hold that breath as I step back, small breath in, small breath out, and then down for the lift. Then I don't go straight into the next rep. I take a new breath, rebrace, go down. Take a new breath, rebrace, go down. Now this is harder to do on sets where you're doing, you know, a set of eight. If you're going to rebrace in between every, every rep, that's going to be pretty rough. But on uh, sets where you're using heavier weight, uh, really fives and under, you should be uh, bracing in between every rep. So here I put my uh, setup in here again. You see I put my hands in the right spots, put one foot into the ground, other foot, screw those in, retract my shoulder blades and pull my lats down like I'm trying to tuck my uh, shoulder blades into my back pockets, position the bar on the rear delt shelf, breathe out my air, tighten my abs, then breathe in air starting, I push the air all the way underneath my belt and then have that air fill up the column uh, all the way up into my chest, tighten the glutes, pull the hips forward, keep a neutral spine, hold my breath, small breath out, breath in, down. Now that's a lot to remember if you're doing it for the first time, but since I've done this thousands of times, it's easy for me to know when I'm supposed to breathe and when I'm not and how to stay tight. You'll also notice that my descent is not quick. I'm not dive bombing the weight into the, the ground, but as I come up, I am getting the weight even to jump off my back a little bit, even with this heavier weight and with pause squats. The reason why is that I'm exploding up as hard as I can, but you don't have to dive bomb a squat uh, to get that uh, to get that kind of bounce out of your hips. In fact, if you dive bomb a squat, you're not going to have a great stretch reflex because you were too loose on the way down. It's not how fast you go into the hole, it's how tight you are in the hole when you get there and can spring back out. Again, the more you do it, the more you'll learn about that. But the breathing is probably the most important thing that I've changed in my lifting over the last year. Uh, a lot of that based out of what Chris Duffin has put out in his content. Now, for the same reason I left my bench set up in here, you see that I uh, will sit up at the front of the bench, pull my shoulder blades back, and then lay down. I'll then push myself back up, wedge my shoulders as far as in as I can, pulling my shoulder blades together, and then tucking my shoulder blades into my back pockets. 
um, and then I bend the bar and pull it out of the rack before I start the lift. Um, some of these reps, uh, this uh, six or 365 by 4 actually was uh, my last warm-up last week, uh, but I decided to use it as my first working set this week only because I've been going so heavy on bench press, um, and since I was only going to do three sets at 405, I decided to pause all of the reps and just work a little bit more. Um, I could have been a little tighter at the bottom of these uh, bench press reps. You'll see that the weight bounces a little bit on some of the reps, and uh, that's a tightness issue that I need to address. Um, but overall, I'm happy with this day, happy with this week in general, um, with the pressing that's been going on. Um, on that note, just uh, when you do hit a plateau, and if you do have one lift that is lagging behind others that are increasing, keep those other ones increasing. I had that question come up, uh, what to do if you have two lifts that are great and one that's terrible. You need to hammer the one that's terrible, maybe add a little extra frequency, a little bit extra work on it, but you don't want to neglect what's going well uh, to work on what's not going well. Always play to your strengths. Um, that's how you increase your total the fastest. It's not about being well-rounded so much as it is as being as strong as you can get. And if you're not a well-rounded lifter because of leverages or whatever, you're just not going to be well-rounded, and you're going to have to accept that. That doesn't mean you have to accept having a terrible lift, though. You keep working it. You keep getting it as good as it can be. But don't neglect what will increase and what will grow so that you can work on what's not growing. Um, that can feed into negativity and some other things as well. It's very important to play to your strengths and focus on what you're good at. In any case, I hope wherever you're at, you're doing well. Blessings.